Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can have the characters uh, and use a vertex animation to actually have the animation of the characters uh, in the game engine. So in Houdini, I just have a empty scene. And for this tutorial, there are actually two things I need before starting. So of course, I need a character and I need an animation with that. So that's something that I will not cover here, but I will give you some tips on what you could use, for example. You can, for example, use uh, some of the templates we have so we can for example, type geometry, and in here, we if we type in body, you will find a, a template body. So you will be able to use this. Um, you can, for example, just export this as well if you wanted to export. So here, F -bar, export FBX. Then we also have um, the uh, labs test models. So we have uh, Louise and Paul. So for example, if you want to already have another character here like Louise, or Paul, you can also use that as testing geometry. So both of them uh, will work. So one of these models could be used. Now for animation, what you could simply do is what I basically have here is you can just plug it directly in an FBX node, and then you can, for example, use Mixamo. So I will actually use some uh, things from Mixamo. Uh, you can do as well, of course, if, if you don't necessarily have something available, you can just go to Mixamo and get an animation there as well. If you have other animations laying around, like any mocap data, or maybe already having uh, characters raked and fully animated, you can just load in that here, and that will be good for these videos. So those are some things you can use. You can, of course, use other things. It Feel free to use things like metahumans or other types of characters and animations. These are like some examples if you don't have anything yet available. So just use a basic template and a basic animation from Mixable, for example. Then our next step is in actually importing that information. So we can just use a character importer node. And this mainly hints towards a FBX file that contains also bones and animation. So it's specifically saying here character, but if you also have like an object that has bones and simulation, uh, bones and animation, you can also use this. So we're gonna just here grab our FBX file. So with that imported, we have then our character. So I have just like this basic human character here. And as you can see, there is no animation on this. So we have like multiple outputs on this node. So we have here our uh, rest geometry. We have then our capturing pose. And then we have actually the animation pose. A simple way of then actually viewing our full animation is to use a B bone deforming node. So place this node and just plug in here all the dots here, like so. And then you will probably just, as you can see, have this animation. Uh, to like you can see that my speed is going pretty fast here. Uh, you can always go here, click this icon, and this will open like the playback options. And we want to make sure that we are enabling a real time playback. Uh, so this will make sure that our frame doesn't go any faster than it should be. So if I now go back, you can see that this is like the this is the normal playback speed. So this is around I think twenty four frames um, you can see it here at the top it's right set it's now set to 24 frames then if you have like again like more animations you can just basically copy paste the setup and now I just and now I have that other animations this is like a sad idle animation here and as you can see like this is also way shorter in terms of frames like it's only lasting around 80 frames I think so here somewhere around 60 frames so you can see that this is way different than the other animation so what i will do with this vertex animation system now if you would have followed previous vertex animation videos we made we also cover how to do basic things for vertex animation so what we're going to use here is we're going to use a soft body uh, of this so we will actually then uh, like this in the system so we will place a no node and then we just say like out uh, animation idle one for example and we will render this out as a vertex animation now if i would do this then here for then the other one so here we have then out idle number two this will output also then other data so what will happen is that every time we have another animation, we will have other data 
uh, we will have new data being stored. And that's not exactly what I want. What I want is that we have only one geometry, which is, for example, now here, my base geometry, and that geometry is then controlled by different textures. So if I would now render out these two to vertex animations, they will both have a unique geometry file and a unique texture file. So if you have like 10 different animations that will quickly stack up of on having multiple geometries and multiple textures. So what we will need to do is we need to figure out how can I keep the same geometry, but only swap the textures and that the textures are, of course, the holding data of the animation files. What is important with that, or what we actually need to do is the first frame will be actually the referencing frame for the vertex animations. So here, my first frame of this animation versus this as an animation, as you can see, is way different. Here we are just like standing and here we are having just like the down look standing. So uh, that means that our output data will be totally different, like I mentioned. So we need to find a way on how can we get the first frame to be similar. What I did with that is I will simply just plug in a switching node. So here we can do a switch of that. So we can say that uh, if our current frame uh, is, for example, e is for example not equal to one, and then we plug in our uh, base geometry and our actual mesh, and as you can see, our first frame now. So if my first frame is not equal to one, we will take output zero, and when this is equal to one. Uh, when I switch here to two, it means that we are now having one and we are switching to this branch. So this way I can just use my rest pose or base pose as my first frame or reference frame. And I can now plug that in over here. So that will be the system I will create for that. Now, another thing we can talk about is that we are sort of like losing this one frame, uh, but we can shift through that. Uh, we can, for example, do a time shifting of that. So what can happen is that the time shift, we say like, look at our current time, but for example, add one frame to that. What I can also recommend doing is, since we have two animations with two different timelines or amount of frames, it might be best for them to be on like the same exact amount of frames amount, uh, because we will also then have more consistency in the output of the texture and so on. So I need to figure out how can I actually scale uh, this animation. This has like a lot of animation data and these, well, this one had like only like a few frames. How can I scale that data? So first of all, we let's place a null node. And the reason for that is because on this orange dot here is actually the uh, animation data. So if we grab our uh, geometry spreadsheet over here, uh, we can see that we have our range amount so 9.9 .9 at a frame rate of 24 frames. And if we go here to the other one, we can see that we have a range of 2.8 at a frame rate of 24 frames. So you can see that there is definitely a difference in, of course, this range value. So we can use here in this node, uh, we have like the timing option and we can change here the playback speed. So we can have a sort of like a bit dynamic uh, uh, formula here that dynamically changes that based on the time. So let's start with this one, for example. So what we need to figure out, so I know it's like 2.933 and 24 frames. So let's take here our playback speed, say that is, this is a 9.933 uh, multiplied by the 24 frames. Um, so this is then, almost the 24 frames I have here, the 240 frames I have here. So we need to divide this by what range do we actually want to have. So in this case, if you want to have 240 frames, we're going to fill it up in here. So what you will see is that in this case, there will be a slight offset here to that. So if I now here play my animation, we will see that it should perfectly actually loop uh, once it comes here. So that was a good loop. So again, if, if you want to change this to then, let's say maybe you want only like 120 frames, and then I can change this over here as well. So 120, 
and we play that over here. We can see that, of course, it will play faster, but it is still perfectly looping. So what we are actually doing here with like forcing these frame numbers and so on, it actually doesn't matter that much for the data because in game engine or in the shaders of the vertex animation, we have something which is called interpolation frames, which will actually smooth out and blend different data. So even though in game, we have to slow down this animation again, we will still be able to have a smooth animation because it will be blending through the frames. So of course, lowering your textures will of course be beneficial to the project. So that's why we can, for example, go with 120 frames or probably even lower. You can try to push this as much as you want to for your project, like fill in like 50 frames or 40 frames and see how far you can get away with that. So let's stick with like 120 frames. Um, so that one is pretty good to go here. So we are basically having like a nice loopable animation. So of course, when we see the final results, it will have that one single frame here where we have like the static pose. Um, so in theory, you could also do like uh, plus one here as well, uh, if you want to like tweak it a bit better. But let's see how everything works later on in the game engine. So let's uh, test out this one here as well. So here we have 2.8 uh, and 24. So we're going to grab the same information here. And in our timing, we're going to paste that. And this needs to be changed into 2.8. And this will then also now be loopable as well. So that works as well. And that's good to go. So our setup is almost ready. This one also needs to have the first frame, of course. So I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to copy paste the system. And I'm going to change the lines here. Like so. And of course, the more animations you have, the more of these you will have to build. If you have to build like a really large ton of them, and I can recommend you starting to look in things like PGG, that might be a bit easier to do larger things like that. If you only have like a handful of animations, it might be interesting to just like set it up like so. Then for actually rendering out the results, we can just uh, use the ROP network. So the ROP network. And here, let's just place it here. We can then build our vertex animation node. So this node, of course, will need to know what to do. So what we are currently doing is we are using soft body deformation. Uh, we are going from frame one to one to many. Then we say the geometry. So we're going to click here our uh, output animation idle one. Then we have some options here. You can just leave it as default for now. Then under export, you can specifically say why you want to save this and so on. I can also heavily recommend you checking out the actual VAT tutorial series about these nodes if you need more information. Then we are basically ready to render this out. I might give this like a proper name. So as naming, uh, we can just probably give this like a, a character idle of one. And let's just press render. When your render is complete, you will have this result. So you have your geometry mesh and you have the textures. So this will then, of course, be used in Game Engine uh, with the shaders. So that's the result you should have. So next video, we'll talk a bit more about that. So this video is mainly preparing that data. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just copy paste the node. And what we need to do here is change this then to idle number two. And I'm also going to change this to idle number two as well. And just click render again. And that was it for this video. So we're mainly focused around getting all the correct data, importing the animation and then exporting the actual vertex animation. So next video, I'm going to show in-game engine how to combine these things.